morning, everyone. We're here to talk about refining swap oil. My name is Jaywan Khan. This is Yaman, Sayed, Maximus, and Amr. So as a quick introduction, uh, the company we decided to highlight was Nobis. And they're an oil company based in Alberta, which prides itself on very, very responsible ways of energy production. Now, like uh, Tamar mentioned, we're doing the refining of slop oil. As a background, slop oil is a waste product uh, that is obtained from the bottoms of tanks, which is to, uh, which is below required specification. So uh, and it usually comprises of water, uh, the oil, and other solids, which are multiplied, but the uh, aspalates are uh, make it difficult to separate under normal conditions. Now, the contemporary way of uh, separating this is using the uh, separation via decantation and centrifugal technology. Previously, uh, slop oil was incinerated and solid waste was disposed in waste pits. This contaminates the uh, local groundwater because there's chemicals like benzene. Uh, now, Max will describe the process further. Okay, so this is technology that um, Synovus Energy adopted. Um, so once slop oil comes in, it's heated into this tank. Um, Emulsifier is also added to reduce the viscosity. Once it's then from there, it's heated, it's heated in this tank, then sent to the decanter where it's separated properly from um, liquid and solids. Solids are filtered out through the air, <coughs> then in the decanter, solids, the waste solids are uh, collected in this tank. Then flow away, it also acts as a blanket gas, pushes out the um, liquid oil, pushes it through this pipeline all the way to the tank where it's heated again for further separation, for further heated for uh, separation. Then it's also filtered for um, excess solids. Then um, the liquid oil comes into the centrifuge, where it's separated from liquid, from oil, water, and solids as well. Solids goes to the bottom and is collected at the sludge tank, this tank here, and that tank over there as well. Then the recovered oil goes up to the slot oil tank where it's for the tree then water is, waste water is, is collected and bought from this line here and collected in this tank. Um, this is a PNID for Synovus Energy. Um, as you can see, certain equipment is placed in parallel. It's not too clear, but wherever it's AB, um, it means that those equipments are spares and they're placed in parallel. Um, so reliability. Um, is achieved by two ways. One is by having equipment placed in parallel and also having a more rigorous uh, preventative maintenance um, schedule. And what this ensures is that uh, key equipment uh, doesn't fail, and if it does fail, it will have an adverse effect on the safety of uh, personnel working and the environment. So we want to reduce this. Uh, redundancy was calculated based on methods taught in the class and lecture notes, and as you can see that when equipment is paired up, um, the reliability increases, uh, meaning that its failure rate uh, is decreased. Um, for example, the pumps, when they're placed in parallel, if one pump is down due to uh, repair or maintenance or malfunction, the other one can be operated in, in order to ensure that the system is continuously operating while the pump that was down uh, can be repaired and maintained. Um, but having a more rigorous preventative maintenance schedule, um, it ensures that there's a safer worker environment and it decreases the need for large scale um, repairs. So some things that we decided to do is on a daily, daily what we would do is check low level cutoffs for the two vessels we have. Um, weekly startup standby heat exchangers and pumps just to ensure that they're uh, available for operation if, if needed and shut down the operational heat exchangers and pumps. Monthly, we would check calibration of all controllers. Um, every six months or semi-annually, we, we would have regular equipment check and safety check, and bi-annually, we would recertify um, the safety valves. Now, the redundancies that uh, Sam was talking about not only help the reliability, they also, they also help the flexibility. Uh, having the ability to use two pumps instead of one in certain situations allows for the operating window of the flow to increase. Uh, we can also increase flexibility through the increase of controllability, and that's where the control uh, system set up in red uh, played a, a task. 
So basically, if we concentrate on the vessel 500, the 5000, which is the major separation unit for the oil, um, we can see that it's connected to uh, to the furnace uh, to allow for basic uh, a higher operating window for the inlet temperature. Uh, we also thought it would be uh, smart to add an inlet control uh, system, which bypasses the heat exchanger uh, for basically just the similar reasons. So um, once we get a static number shutting down, these are the procedures that we put in place. For startup, we have to ensure that all the equipment, like valve sensors and um, pumps are turned on. And we probably designed to, to clear off all um, waste material that was there before. And then finally, we also preheat this the operated separators that we have so that we can attain um, the desired temperature for separation. Then during this startup, we also check the um, temperatures and monitor the stages as we go along. So in short down procedure, what we, what we plan to be doing is first of all shut off the supply into the heat, then monitor the level controllers, monitor the level in the tank, and uh, reduce the heat supply. And also we shut off all we shut off the pumps that we are not using anymore. Then finally project all the lines of all waste that's in there. And uh, once all this is done, turn off the pumps, the valves, and place lockout tags on uh, on all the equipment so that maintenance knows that. Uh, these equipment are no longer in use and they could be serviced. In terms of safety, we wanted to make sure that we include um, a method for each level in the hierarchy. So the main issue with our process is the furnace that we have present. We wanted to make sure that if the airflow stops, we, we don't have an accumulation of the fuel gas inside the furnace, that mm -hmm. when hit an ignition source or some sort of a fire, that, that could explode. So we installed a lot of control valves, a lot of high-level alarms, a lot of safety relief devices, and an emergency response procedure to respond to, like, when the operators know there's a high level, how do we evacuate the plant and make sure that we get everyone out um, and away from hazard. Another hazard example we want to cover is for the node of an exit pipe from a heat exchanger to a sales oil tank. This is a tank that stores most of our final products, so we want to make sure that the quality and the specificity of this product is on grade. Um, the parameter we're going to look at is flow, and one of the one of the guide words that would be used was more flow. <coughs> this could be caused by either two things. It could be a control valve that fails, um, or the pump is set to a higher nominal flow, um, either by an operator or the pump is malfunctioning. We don't know, but that's a definite cause that can cause that. The consequences of those two things are inadequate heating for the for too much material flow into the through the pipes, which causes the uh, which means that the heat exchanger can't keep up with how much, how much heat transfer is required, or the pump will empty V5000, leading to cavitation of the pump. The layers of protection included right now are very minimal in that there's a control valve up to V5030, which ensures that if there is too much material flowing through the heat exchanger, that it'll decrease the flow of the coolant through the pipes, which means that it'll allow for more heat exchange to occur. And um, a, few that, a few actions we want to incorporate in here are install a high-level flow alarm, high flow alarm uh, which means that if there's too much flow going through the pipes, one of them wants to make sure the operators know and are aware of that, so they can, they can incorporate a fix. And we want to install a sit to stop the pump or reduce the flow of slop oil from the, from, the, from the tank. Or we want to relieve, we want to pressure relief valve to re redirect the extra flow back to the tank. All right, so now for the class activity, you're gonna use the board. Okay, so the, there's a trouble uh, shooting scenario that we want to look over, and we're gonna use uh, an alternative method for the exploration, uh, the technique that we used to have uh, for our troubleshooting exercise in class. It's uh, our, our problem here is that uh, V5000, the separator, is at its capacity, and the slop oil is, uh, is uh, the slop oil is set, being sent to 550 to V5050, and uh, the uh, the slop oil uh, is uh, causes oil, the temperature from here causes the water to uh, well, cause oil to have uh, uh, to be 
be present in the water stream. So it's important to note as well that uh, there are normal temperatures of controller one must be higher than, than the controller two. That's our normal condition. So to root cause uh, the, the problem, we use the, the fish bone diagram. Basically, what we have our effects on the right side. We have a water stream contains oil. And uh, we have our causes in here. There could be many other uh, uh, causes that we have to brainstorm, such as method, material, machine. It could be a man uh, or a human error, or a uh, root cause, or environment, and measurement. Because of the time issue, we're going to focus on the last three here, the environment and the measurement. So one, one root cause could be the temperature deviation. So it could be an environment that is uh, outside. So like, if anybody is uh, uh, would like to guess, or like brainstorm, not to guessing is not good, but like think outside temperature is uh, is too. Um, what do you guys think that would be as a root cause? We want to we want to clarify here that the the material will flash at high temperatures, yeah. so the liquid oil in V five thousand will become gas. Um, it will become a vapor, which we which we think is a is a cause for there being oil present in the water stream. What's the principle of V five thousand and V five zero five zero? Um, there would be cancers. Okay. So, hold on, quick question. Um, does, question. Does V5000 feed to V550 or 5050, or does, because there's no arrow on that top line. Yeah, so, yeah, I assume V5000 feeds to V5050, and then yeah. V5000 is filled up, and you're getting your slop oil into the V5050. Yeah, exactly. And you're getting too much, which means your level controller is off. It's one cause. Level controller? Level controller? Yeah, makes sense. So another one you say is uh, let's try to focus on environment. So like um, anyone can think of anything that might be the cause of the environment, uh, David? Temperature is too high. Yeah, that might be one. Temperature is too high. So that could be a root cause that could affect our temperature uh, separation. And uh, it could be a weather issue that we didn't consider in our flexibility or or the process that it is affecting the separation process to happen. Another root cause is now, now to focus on, uh, which we'll, we'll, we'll take care of next to the measurement. So there's another question here. So like, where do you guys think would be, uh, uh, where, where would the, the effect of the environment uh, lead to uh, a measurement issue? So where would exactly uh, the root cause of the measurements? Yeah, isn't your slop oil heavy bitumen? Wouldn't that be at low temperatures be almost solid? So you have to have your line eat it into your first separator. So, like, coming in, your slop oil would be mostly bitumen, wouldn't it? Heavy, heavy bitumen. Um, so it's if you're fit up of different things, it's not only bitumen. Yes, yeah. I'm just wondering at low temperatures, it would be very solid. It would be very so when we say too high, we don't mean uh, in the sense that oh, well, it's just high enough so that it's liquid. It means that it's too high for the ideal condition, or it's too high in the outside the range that should be under optimal separating conditions. So what you're saying is correct. Under very cold conditions, it would be a solid, but that wouldn't be within the range of the operating window range anyway. So it would be some person. Did I answer that? So one of the things we could say is that maybe the temperature controller on the actual vessel itself is not functioning, but that, then that's again, we need to verify that we can make sure that that's actually our problem so technically, um, so having a temperature control here for a, a temperature control sensor malfunction could be a root cause because since we already have uh, 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 oil being in, present in the water stream, that means our temperature sensors or our temperature controllers of one is uh, uh, the sorry the temperature control in uh, in two is approximately close in temperature to controller one, so that means this is a coolant. This this temperature T two should be much lower than the temperature in T T one. If this temperature here is uh, is already at, uh, at at a very close temperature in here, and then the controller one it will cause flash to occur in the stream leaving the V5000, having, causing vapor uh, oil to be present in the separator uh, V5050. From that, it is difficult to separate 
uh, the water from the oil because of the because of, because of flashing that occurred using from the vapor uh, uh, the oil vapor. So that's that's one of the checks people perform where we check the temperature controller on the heat exchanger, temperature controller on the V5000, just to make sure that they're operating at the right temperature. If they're really close to each other, then we know that either one or both are malfunctioning, and we want to check that to make sure. And that could be a definite cause for a problem. Uh, in terms of that, we're done. Any questions or anything would be you want to know. Perfect question. Is this mostly oil sands, oil or conventional from Sonovas? Oil sands. Oil sands is up in Fort Perry or is it in uh, Cold Lake? Just this point. Um, Cold Lake. It's in Cold Lake. Yeah. Would it be something that we would consider in the same the material or the method section? Sorry, I uh, under the material or method section of the fish bottom diagram, what would be the sorts of things you'd be looking for there? Um, under material, we're going to say that either the feed coming into the tank is either too hot itself already, and under the method, we're going to say that either um, there was a new um, SOP update or a change that the operator not follow following, where the method that we're using now is actually incorrect. We were either adding too much heat or we're not heating it enough. The operator is doing something wrong based on what they're reading off from the engineers. So we want to make sure that we have a method right and materials right for that. And under the man-woman section, I guess there's, that's uh, operators. Yeah, yes. this, this, kind of, this kind of closing with this one where this is the operator issue. Or it could be the engineer issue. We don't want to always blame the operators. And the machine would be that either the heat exchanger is not working, the heat exchanger is malfunctioning. Like the heat exchanger itself is not malfunctioning. There's some sort of heat transfer error. So that would be the machine there, yeah. And uh, just in your starting procedure that you had, that you're going to clear the lines up, what, how, do you, how do you do that and where do you dump the stuff that you're clearing up? Um, we have a sump stack, but we didn't show it here. So we're going to use um, nitrogen, which is inert, to just flush out the lines of any waste so it doesn't react with the oil or anything. But the, the waste that comes out is going to be fed into the sump stack. Okay. And then you treat that later on? Or yes. Bring it back in? So we treat it zero on. Yeah. Any other questions? Who may want? Thanks, guys.